there was a new Hilti construction layout update that came out uh, just recently this month in March. And I want to go through a couple of the new features that comes with this update because they're a pretty big deal. Uh, just to show you the update itself, if I go down to my settings and go to system info, the update is this right here, 3.0.0.9. And right off the bat, I just want to show you that uh, in the settings as well, there is this new option down here under support. If I click on support, you'll see that uh, you now have a hot button to open up the remote support link. So if I click on this, it's going to take me to the Internet Explorer uh, at this log me in one, two, three page. And uh, as long as I'm talking to somebody from support or my local measuring specialist, I can type in that code and they can log into my tablet to help me out with whatever I'm having a problem with. So that's a really nice new feature, that hot button. Before, the only way to get that was to actually go to Internet Explorer and type in that itself. So that's there for us. And um, if you need, you can also add uh, or have somebody help you add information right here. That'll let you have information to people's numbers that you can save right here rather than trying to keep them on your phone or however, however else you saved them. Uh, this is just nice to have them all in one place. So those are the first two things, the uh, update number and a couple of nice support items. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Uh, the first thing being that you now have this hot button here, this little plus sign. And you can see I've already added a couple of, uh, a couple of items here. Uh, what I really like that they added, so they added the hot button. And in addition to this hot button, they've added names to everything on this, on this first screen. So you can know what you're kind of getting yourself into. So to add an object, you just go to the plus sign and it's gonna bring up all the different applications within the tool. It includes uh, not only the draw functions and the point creation functions, but um, your also your distances and all of your um, applications for the actual measurement aspect of the tool. So feel free to add what you prefer to this hot screen and kind of organize it like you would an Android tablet or an iPad, and uh, I think you'd be good to go. If you accidentally add one here that you need to delete, just long press it, release, and just say yes, you wanna delete that shortcut. And it'll go back and you could Go back to here and re-add something else that you need. The next thing they've added, I'm going to just go ahead and go into this measure and save button here. This or what I call measure and record. I, I have my station just stationed at a random, at random location. When I'm in measure and record, um, the nice new thing here is you can come into here and you can add attributes to your measured points. Right, so I can add, let me just add uh, attribute uh, like wall, something simple. I'll go ahead and measure that point out there on the wall that attribute will save in my point list under my measured point. So you can see now that attribute is included there with this point so that I can uh, see kind of the progress as I work and any attribute I add to these measured points for myself. Now, one thing I will say is that I still prefer to name these points what I know them to be. So if this is a wall, I would just name it wall one or if this was a manhole or something like that, I would name it that uh, just because I think it's nicer when I have measured points to see that on the point list rather than digging through all the attributes. And just in case the attributes for whatever reason get deleted or not saved properly, something like that, that I might mess up on something, I can always go back to the title of the name I gave it. That's just my two cents on that. Another thing with that though is you can also, as you're measuring these points, you can specify what layer you want them on, whatever layers you have on your on your CAD file or on your project, and uh, they'll be saved to that layer, not to mention if you are connecting your points with a line, the lines that go along with these points will also be connected, will also be on that same layer as well. So that's just a nice quick update on the measure and record feature that they had. The next thing they added is a, a an update to a feature under height transfer. If I go to height transfer, uh, one thing that I, I've been hoping to have for a long time now uh, is the ability to measure a height point on a wall and then be able to move my unit very quickly to another part of the wall and have it automatically move to that point. So just to give you an idea, if I measure a spot on the wall right now that I'm at, if I measure that at my zero, and then if I go ahead and move my unit to another wall, the tool automatically turn the tool is automatically going to turn to adjust what it needs to to get back to that zero mark on that wall. And I can even come in here and click offset. Let's say I want to have a, a negative offset from that. Let's say I need to go a negative one from that original point. I can say enter 
and the tool will automatically adjust and go down that one foot to get to that new offset and zero out. So it's a really nice feature that uh, allows you to transfer heights across the wall very quickly. If uh, you weren't aware of the workaround before that was to use the line layout function to do that, uh, and you no longer have to do that, which is really nice. The next feature they added is the theodolite mode, which is this right here, this little uh, cross here with an arrow. This is literally just a theodolite, and one thing I'll say about it is when you use a theodolite, uh, you're using the tool as a pivot point as you turn the tool certain angles around that pivot point. So this is, this is very applicable for a POS 180 that has a plumb laser that goes down to the ground so you can know exactly what point it's over. It might not be super convenient to use the PLT 300. Just because of the PLT 300, you don't know exactly, it's hard for you to see directly beneath it exactly what point it's over. You can't really station over a point, but you can still use it. You can still use it functionally, but I'll have another video that goes over this, but essentially you can come in here, spin your tool around at certain angles, uh, set your HA um, angles to zero and and uh, spin to find your 90s and your 180s. But uh, stand by for another video on that where I can go into it more depth. But for now, if there's any questions about this current update, feel free to uh, leave a question in the comments. But that is essentially the new stuff that came and it's a pretty big deal. And I think you're gonna really like it.